Good morning! I'm Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome back to the next episode of a Mon the Monster Manual Backward. Today, we are going to be tackling the Bears of Appendix A. We are starting today off with the Black Bear. The Black Bear is a medium beast unaligned with an armor class of 11 from natural armor and 19 hit points that'd be 3d8 plus 6 speed of 40 feet with a climb speed of 30 feet strength of 15 dexterity of 10 constitution of 14 intelligence of 2 wisdom of 12 and a charisma of 7 uh, skilled in Perception, plus 3, with a Passive Perception of 13. No Languages, Challenge Rating 1 half. And as the ability Keen Smell, the bear has Advantage Wisdom Perception checks that rely on smell. Its actions are Multi-Attack. The bear makes two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. Uh, the bite is a melee weapon attack, does plus three to hit, reach a five feet, one target, and on a hit it does 1d6 plus two piercing damage. And then the claws is a... The ability claws is a melee weapon attack, plus three to hit, reach a five feet, one target, and it does 2d4 plus two slashing which averages it out as a little bit stronger. Now, with the bears, as we're about to see, um, each one gets stronger than the one before. And... How I would use the black bear is, um, again, I would put it on a random encounter chart. Um, they could be... Decently difficult to fight at a low level. But your adventurers will quickly outpace it. Um, by about level 2 or 3, they should be able to take on a black bear by themselves. Especially your more melee focused um, adventurers. With an armor class of 11, it's not going to be very hard to hit a bear. Um, as we've talked about before, um, even for a level 1 character, you're looking at the main stat to hit getting probably at least a... you know Once you add in your um, proficiency modifier, you're looking at probably between a plus five to plus seven to hit so i mean they could be hitting off as little as four and probably not they probably don't require higher than six and with almost 20 hit points a level one or a level two character is not going to down a bear unless it's a spellcaster um, shooting off one of their higher level spells, and even then, it, they'd have to max damage and it'd be close. Like, burning hands, um, if the bear fails the dexterity saving throw and you do max damage, it'd bring the bear, it'd bring an average hit point black bear down to one health from full. So... You're probably not going to hit it in... You know, you're not going to be able to one-shot the bear. However, the bear might not get a chance to go, depending on how it rolls in its initiative, even against a level 1 party. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why I want it to be on a random counter table... Um, you know, as I've said before, and 
like race and alignment was in the uh, Appendix B part of this series, it's going to be... A lot of these, uh, almost all of these, are going to be background, you know, set dressing that you're like, oh shit, I need a stat for it. You know, I need a stat block. Or it's going to be a random encounter table entry. Um, which, by the way, I am a fan of not leveling your random encounter tables. Um, I am perfectly fine with having a 5th level party and on a random encounter table having an ancient dragon um, next to, like, a bat. So, because I think um, leveling it, that kind of breaks the idea that you're in a living, breathing world. So, yeah. Um... Also, another thing, black bears wouldn't be that bad for, uh, like, a summon woodland creatures type of spell or wild shaping, things like that. Um, black bears aren't terrible fighters. They're just, um, with action economy and how that works against almost every single creature in this entire book, um... A lone black bear really isn't going to be a threat. So, that's something to think about. Moving on up to the brown bear. The brown bear is a large beast, unaligned, armor class 11, hit points 34. That'd be 40, 10, plus 12. A speed of 40 feet and a climb of 30 feet. 19 Strength, 10 Dexterity, 16 Constitution, 2 Intelligence, 13 Wisdom, 7 Charisma. It's skilled in Perception, plus 3, with a passive Perception of 13. No Languages, Challenge Rating 1. It also has the abil ability of Keen Smell, which gives it advantage on Perception checks that rely on Smell. It also has a multi-attack. The bear makes two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. Um, the bite does is plus five to hit, reach five feet, one target, does 1d8 plus four piercing damage, and its claws are melee attack, plus five to hit, reach of five feet, one target, does 2d6 plus four slashing. So, if you notice, the brown bear and the black bear are almost the exact same. The brown bear has more health. Um, almost every stat is higher. Um, in, the, in strength, it's higher by a lot. And then it gets progressively smaller. And then with its bite and claw, it's an extra plus two to hit, and they step up the damage die by one step. But what that means is instead of hitting, or instead of averaging five and seven, a brown bear averages eight and eleven damage. Um, a brown bear, you're not going to be. You're not going to be able to one-shot it, like, definitely at low levels. Uh, 34 hit points. You're... Even though you're going to be hitting on between a 4 and a 6 or higher, it's unlikely that you're going to take out a brown bear in one round. And... At plus 5 to hit, it's going to be hitting 50% or more of the time against level 1 characters. In fact, it's the worst it's going to do against almost all level 1 characters is a hit ratio of 45%. Um, because it's really hard at level 1 to get your AC above 16 
And so with the if the bear hits with both, it can easily take a first level character from full health down to nothing. In fact, what it might be able to do is bite one, take it down, claw second one, take it down. Um, like a brown bear would be a hard fight for a level one party, just a single brown bear. And again, this is assuming you've got about four um, characters. I think, I think brown bears, looking at their stats, really fit their challenge rating. Um, I would put this on most random enc encounter tables for the wilderness. Um, you know, this bear is going to be faster. Um, it also has a climb speed, and its climb speed is going to be faster than anyone but a tabaxi. I think a tabaxi is the only official race that has a climb speed fast enough. Um, but even then, a tabaxi might only have a 20-foot climb speed. I don't remember. So... The brown bear is going to be faster than your party. Um, if your party gets into a fight with a brown bear at level 1, expect at least one person to go down, if not a TPK. Um, yeah, brown bears can fuck shit up. And they're not even the strongest. Let's move on to the strongest of the bears. And we are on to the last bear, the Polar Bear. It is a large beast, unaligned. Armor class of 12, so we've got an upgrade, finally. Uh, hit points of 42, that'd be 5d10 plus 15. A speed of 40 feet with a swim speed of 30. Got 20 strength, 10 dexterity, 16 con, 2 intelligence, 13 wisdom, 7 charisma. Uh, it's skilled in perception. It gets a plus three. Has passive perception of 13. No languages. Challenge rating two. It also has keen smell, which, remember, is a advantage on perception checks that rely on smell. It has a multi-attack. It makes two attacks, one with its bite and one with its claws. Its bite does plus seven to hit, reach of five feet. It's a melee weapon attack. Um, one target does 1d8 plus 5 piercing. And then its claws is plus 7 to hit, plus five, or reach of 5 feet. Also a melee weapon attack. One target does 2d6 plus 5 slashing. And there is a variant of the polar bear. Some bears have adapted to life underground, feeding on subterranean lichen and blind fish. Known as cave bears, these ill-tempered behemoths have coarse dark hair and dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. Otherwise, they have the same statistics as a polar bear. And a polar bear, again, like the black bear, I think it really fits well with its challenge rating. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the challenge rating system was created once they finished append Appendix A. Um, I think Appendix A fits really well in challenge rating, or at least on paper. Um, I haven't thrown groups at this enough to test to see how well, but I think it does. I think it fits. Um, a polar bear and a cave bear I would put in extreme weather temperatures. Well, I would put the polar bear in, like, arctic temperatures. Um, and then I'd put the cave bear underground or maybe near cave systems. But, uh... So, with the polar bear, a low-level party is going to be hitting off of a 5 to 7 rather than 4 to 6. So, 
It's going to be harder for them to hit, but we're still talking they're going to be hitting a majority of the time. Um, they're just going to have to... I don't think you can kill a polar bear with a level 1 or a level 2 party in one round unless you have a large party uh, with 42 hit points. Uh, with a four-person party, they're going to have to average over 10 damage. Um, and that's... Well, that is possible. Um, it's going to be hard. So, I don't foresee that really happening. And then... Doing 1d8 plus 5 and 2d6 plus 5. That's 9 and 12 for averages... That hits hard. Um, but again, they're they're gonna quickly go out of you know go out of that range. Um, I think by level five, your tanks could solo a polar bear without very much issue. Um, like a level five champion fighter that dual wields in one round he's gonna have three attacks um action surge could get him five and that's just gonna wail away at the polar bear um yeah i think I think in one round, a fully rested champion fighter that's at level 5 could take a polar bear from full health to zero. Um, yeah, just, I think they can do it. So, there you go. Um, that's, a, that's the polar bear. Thank you so much for listening to that episode of... The Monster Manual Backward. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the next episode of The Stolen Land.